Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for checking out Attack Power Gaming. Today, we are diving into game one of the SDL League's Division 3 final. If you enjoy this content, hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon to get better at Steel Division 2 and support the channel. Let's dive right in. So here we are. We are checking out. Uh, this is this happened about a month ago now, but we are checking out the Division Three final of the Season Eight of League here between Homeyun and Mamil. Um, many of you probably saw the games I had against uh, Homeyun when he knocked me out in the semifinals. So I decided it was probably time to go check out how that final went. And uh, yeah, check these games out. This is a best of five series here uh, going by league rules and all that good stuff. So these players did picks and bang bands and all that good stuff. They ended up here on Tali in Hantala with Homeyun on the first Piechoti, first Polish here on Maverick, and Mamil on, oh, my personal favorite, the fifth Cavalry Motorizata on Juggernaut. Ooh, very spicy. So yeah, up on the screen, you should have just saw the two decks. Definitely, uh, I mean, pretty standard from both of them. Nothing too crazy that way. Um, you know, I'm definitely interested to see how Mamil plays this Juggernaut income. Uh, definitely not my usual choice, but hey, he's feeling confident. So up north, homie, massive force of troops. Uh, just huge. This is a ton of troops. Tons of T70, T74, uh, T76s. Uh, the the bad assault guns there. Oziokanis, which are the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, disheartened, uh, Strafniki, a 37 mil, bo uh, for AA defense, actually quite, quite light down south here. And we have an early off map from Mimil here. Very, very common for him. Uh, he's big into these early off map and kind of, uh, I don't want to call them cheese starts, but it's a cheese start. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of Puska Antikars here, which are the, uh, the, the really good AT rifles here going to get countered by these PTRSs and also these assault guns coming in here. This beginning part is very important. Homie definitely needs to take an early lead here with this Maverick, game, especially against Juggernaut. Uh, he definitely have a little bit of time, though. That horse goes down, did not unload in time, and a Roshiori. Definitely not too great there, to be sure. So these assault guns definitely doing a lot of damage. 45 mil trying to lay down just a little bit of supply, uh, support there. Maybe you saw though in. This should definitely help. These do not have AP, so they're just shooting HE, but we can see that 45 mil already going down. Down south, we do see a, a little bit of push down here, which is very uh, abnormal to be sure. I think the uh, recon plane dropped some napalm there, which is really cool. It's definitely something important to know. Not napalm, it's like an HE, it's like an HE bomb, and not like a normal one, it's like HE cluster or something. Um we have a 45 coming in. We see a little bit of smoke. That off map, unfortunately, for Mimil, completely missing. Because ab un unnormal, like not normal, uh, Homey and not sending really any troops here into this spot. This is usually a very heavily contested area. But uh, Mimil, of course, playing very conservatively. Got a little aggressive with that horse there, trying to get that uh, Puska Antikar across. It would have been great if he just sat it here. It could have really covered off all of this light armor coming out. That Puska Antikar definitely can take down, especially half traps, but even these T-70s. Yeah, it's got a... I mean, it's a difficult penetration, but side, definitely. Uh, down south, still Strozzi pushing forward. Roshiori PM, not a fan of these. Uh, you should just take more normal Roshiori. For five more points, you get a real squad of infantry instead of these, like, half-baked units. Uh, I don't really fully understand why people take these. Uh, they're, they're just not that great. Uh, you get the two ZBs, but again, five points more and you get a full infantry squad. Uh, you don't get the PTRD, but you don't really need it. You have the Puska Antikar, so I'm, I'm not I'm not sure of that take. I never understand. But Emil here with a 1410 dominating this open ground to grab these two flags. Very big. Uh, you know, first Polish, not really any 2k he stuff and it's not that fifth cav has much the the rajits uh rajits are basically all you actually have along with your planes nothing 2k though that way so sort of surprising to see mamil grabbing this so easily but he needs it he needs these early points to hold off through b phase and definitely for talian hantala this is 
This is a tricky map to play Maverick. If you don't really get a foothold, it's really tough. These open grounds make it really hard to make big pushes. G BF109 strafing out this 76 assault gun here. Up north, 37, trying to take that out of the sky. Basically out of ammo anyway. It got its time in the sun. Uh, ABU Soar. Definitely not an ideal match against these T-70s. A couple side shots, though, could definitely do some damage. He definitely got a few hits in, but he's got to get out of there now. From the front, not so good. Oh, he got lucky. Very, very lucky. Again, if these were just normal... I mean, if they were just normal Rosario, it wouldn't make a difference here. Although, he would be bigger. He'd have more survive survivability. I guess he does have that PTRD there. That's nice, but... Yeah, so at range, the Otsiokani... Well, they're out of cover, so they're probably going to lose, actually. But with the support of the T-70 and M3A1, they'll definitely lose that little fight there. Salt gun getting in on the Jordan Shiori PNM. We have the off-map IAR coming in again. But it's definitely not going to get its bombs off, for sure. It's going to at least drop the, the off-map. Let's see if he keeps it alive. These are actually really useful to stay alive. Unlike most off-map planes, this has armament. like And it's an effective armament at that. So for only 90 points, those things are pretty crazy. Uh, Strelsey killing off whatever he had down here, that Roshiori PM. Uh, he definitely wants to move these Roshiori into a position to kind of cover off the open ground here to fight him in a cover disadvantage for Homeun. Pioniti Kaladi easily should be able to dominate these Strelsey LKM at close range. These are so strong. It's a double machine gun assault, assault rifle. M3A1 does go down to this Stug 3, bringing Stugs early. Very nice. 45 mil. Oh, takes that out. Very nice. Oh, that could have been... That was the actually the Roshiori... And once again, better than the PM. The PM could not have done that, and this guy does it just fine. Trading off retreats here. So much. These are are so, just so good. Off map, not doing a lot, honestly. Kind of an odd call, and probably would have plopped it more here. These Otsiokani, you definitely want to get in closer to these. Uh, at close range, yes, they still have the PPSHs, but not like an absurd number, and the triple dp is what is really dangerous there roshio at close range should be able to beat the streltsy uh there's a big veterancy gap here though so that could swing it for sure usually though with the double zb 30s which are assault machine guns so assault rifles which means they actually can shoot at close range uh they have the machine gun advantage so they should be able to suppress faster here and we are seeing that even with the big veterancy disadvantage 45 mil uh, let's see if he can kill this T-70. And it does. Oh, love these things. Absolutely heart. Big hearts. Takes out another T-70. And that's going to be really important. That light armor can definitely be damaging. Yak-1B coming in, hitting probably some of these infantry here. Uh, I don't know why you would bring in the Yak-1B over an IL-2. Uh, the IL-2s are only... Uh, I didn't get to see it in time. I think these are like at least 90 points. I don't know why you wouldn't just bring the 100-point IL-2, which is way more effective... Like, bigger bomb load and just way more deadly. This IL-2M trying to probably trying to find this Stug. Stug G Fuhr. Uh, nothing up here that can stop it. That The PTRD of the... Of the Otsiokani here. Definitely not going to penetrate the front of that. And because of that... Uh, because of that disheartened trait, they do take suppression so fast. Mamil is moving this. Will he get out of there in time? There is a big spread. He shouldn't die. Yep. So the suppression from the 25 mil should keep it from dying there most times. BF109, G6, R6, uh, G4, R6 easily takes down that IL-2M. That's a big kill, actually. Uh, killing these Stugs is really important for uh, Homeoon. But he has swung it back to a 1410, grabbing back both of these flags, this one now and this one as well. So making that northern push his focus. The Roshiori did beat out those Streltsy, which um, is not surprising, as I said. Though even I was thought maybe that Veteran C... Disadvantage might make the difference. Hotchkiss, not sure why I I would not take these over the the ZB whatever it is. It's basically the SG43 because now that has 1250 meter range and it's a little cheap. It's 10 points cheaper than this. ABU sword though should be able to make quick work of these things. It's going to lay down so much suppression and there's really no armor to counter, which is pretty huge. If Emil can make good use of his armored cars, first poles can definitely suffer against that. Their infantry excellent, their T-34 spam excellent, but if you can dodge those things, these ABU swords can really run around pretty much unchallenged. Here comes that IAR again. Another kind of poor call-in of the uh, off-map. Here comes that HE, though. 
doing the damage it needs to do to kill that assault gun. And while those assault guns aren't fantastic, they are still assault guns. They're definitely laying down a lot of fire. This Puska Antikot in a beautiful position. If he goes too aggressively here, if Homie is too aggressive with these half tracks, this Puska Antikot will wipe them out because it is two Solothurns, which is 40 rounds a minute. They just fire so fast. Oh, he's moving in. A lot of suppression up here. Up north, 45 mil taking on this T-34 at that range. It will not win. Let's see this thing work. Oh, my goodness. Two shots, 500 meter range. And it's just insta-death. And now those Pianili Kalati can easily take out these Desants. Uh, Zis 3 putting some supporting fire down. We see that off-map coming in, though. Nothing pushing, though. And nothing coming from Emil, either. So this off-map is not going to do much. Although this can kill things. It's a strong off-map. Rociori versus Desants. Uh, with these guys out of grenades, that's a definitely a winnable fight. Like I said, these the Rociori are just... Uh, they're one of the best CQC line infantry. As in, they're not dedicated CQC units, but they still just do so much work in 100 meter range. <clears throat> Couple support guns and such building up here. The 45, the Hotchkiss, this Schwaloza. Although, again, I, I would take the... I think it's a ZB something or other. Saperzi, this is really not their ideal range, to be sure. Still 1410, but if Emil can hold this 1410, that's not too bad for him. Not the best, but it's not too bad. Yak, 1B at 95 points. I don't know why you wouldn't just spend 5 more points to get a way better bomber with very good resilience. Uh, BF-109, G4-R6, definitely has the armament to take that down, but can it get on the back of it? It's, it's damaged it quite nicely. Uh, another 25 mil here. Yep, there it is right there. I was about to say it would be excellent. These 25 mil hot chases are really, really strong. Homian being really aggressive with his bomber here, trying to dogfight this BF-109. Very aggressive. Desant taking out some Roshiori. Against a fresh squad, they definitely don't have a chance. Yeah, that was a bad choice. Yak 1B going down there. This needs to get called off. It is smoking. It will not last any longer if any sort of AA gets on it. But Emil just doesn't care. I, I respect the gutsiness here. Yeah, look at that. A little bit of machine gun. Even that 50 cal has a chance to take him down. He's got to be careful, but he drove off this Zis 3. It was a very, it was a very nice move. I would have never done that. I guess that's what makes him better than me. <laughs> ABU Sor forcing off these old seal Connies. T3476 definitely applying some pressure, causing some problems here. Uh, a Rashitsa here would be fabulous. That could easily wipe both of these out and supply then some really strong uh, HE damage. 82 millimeter mortar coming in. This is probably going to bomb this area here we see some smoke coming down and now he's pushing forward unfortunately that smoke is not covering off this pusagon car successfully so anything that drives around this road is still going to die to this just su super deadly weapon more smoke coming down here homeland has to hope that he actually cuts it off but it looks like he's laying it a little bit too far back uh, 45 mil does get a penetration on the t-34 doing sight damage uh, it basically just makes it harder for the t-34 to see even though they don't see much to start and if anything else sees them, they, it's just fine. Uh, Stug 3 gets a nice line of sight on that T-34. Ooh, big loss there. Stug 3's at this range. Absolutely dominant against a T-34-76. Here they come. He did get some good smoke in to cover off this Puska finally. Although there's still a big gap here. If he pushes too far down, this Puska Antigar can easily kill these Universal Carriers. Not... I've seen people use these and they can be really good against the right division. I don't think... I don't think 5th Cav is the right division. They have plenty of infantry AT and light AT to take care of this sort of unit, so I, I would not have fan. This is what he should have been calling in. This 100-point IL-2 with the two 250s and the very good resilience. This is what you should be using, not the Yak-1B. I'm don't. i very confused on that, Colin. IAR floating around, trying to get a couple uh, kills here with its bombs. 25 mils, just, they just do so much work. They're so much better than 20 mils. It's a little ridiculous, actually. I'm not sure what these are aiming at. Oh, he's going to float into range of the Puska. Oh, and he fails to take him down. Wow, a couple really unlucky bounces there because there's really not any armor here. So the fact it bounced at all, it's pretty incredible. These Ultio Carni, though, out of cover at the moment. There's not much to stop them. If they go too deep, the Pianiti Kalati can definitely beat them with grenades. Uh, but at range, they obviously have the advantage. 
which is why I'm surprised he's pushing these these forward now. The grenade will definitely do a good job. Unfortunately, these cannot be surrendered because of the leader back here. And this one just out of position right now, not supporting at all. Definitely a problem. At this range, though, they should... I'm not sure if this is shooting or not. It's not, but they still have a lot of guns. Definitely need some reinforcements. These peanut assault are not really what the doctor ordered. IAR recon. Usually see these in phase A. We are solidly in phase B now, so he definitely uh, brought a card of those in phase B. So deadly. So much HE power on these things. It's actually pretty crazy. So nice kill there, killing that leader. That's a pretty big kill. Maxim here. Supplying some suppression on these door but the Stug does see that. Looks like the one T-34 we saw go down, the other one has fallen back in. Mimilus recaptures. It's still 13-11, but perfectly fine. 23 minutes to defeat, but he's only got six more minutes of horrible income to survive through. And then about five minutes after that, he he evens out in terms of income. Another smoke barrage coming down. Looks like some Sapizi are trying to breach into here. Although there are some Rodoshiori here, and as long as those are there, I'd say that he's probably pretty safe. The Hotchkiss, of course, can supply some damage if it doesn't get smoked off. Maxim goes down to that Stug 3. Pretty good kill there. He definitely needed to kill that to open this up. If he can take out the Sepirzi and get something in here, he'll recapture this flag, and that would definitely be a good capture. Universe Carrier, just being obnoxious. IAR, taking out another unit. This is so much value. <laughs> he gets three off maps with it. Not that he hit very well with them, but he, you get three off maps, and then it's a bomber as long as you keep it alive. And it's recon. It's just a very, very good unit. Hoping to see more of those in the uh, the new new DLC. Although I don't want more off map, so I, I'd like to see more IARs, I guess. Here's our first Rashitsa of the game. Best AT gun in the game, in my opinion, for price and everything. Should be able to take out at least one of these transports. Yeet. Oh, the problem is the Kalarashi started firing, so it forced the unload. Does take out the second one, though. So, very nice killer. Now these Sapezi are stuck out in the open with the Kalarashi, and the Rashitsa going to immediately take those out. Pianini Kalari. Getting hit for free by this Universal Carrier. Definitely not great. Pioneer Assault should be able to absolutely dominate these Sepposi, especially with them weakened. Stug 3, putting down some fire on these. Big push coming in here. About halfway through B phase. Remember, it's really a fight against the clock here. Pioneer Assault, this is not a good position for them. They should not be so far out. Uh, obviously getting hit by this SU-76 and, uh, yeah, not noticing that there, unfortunately, for Mamil. Now we have some good, very good units here. Sapezi rocks. These guys can definitely throw down with these Pianiti Assaults. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, these Pianiti Assaults should still win in the woods. But with the Sapezi and two squads of these, mm, probably not. Probably ain't going to do it. Here we go. Especially because this Sapezi will probably well, will get his TNT off eventually. Pianiti Kaladi. Oh, they tried. They failed. And this is like a three-on-one. That's not what you want to see. JU-87 Cluster going for some of this armor. Deciding to take out one of these SU-85s. Very important because the, the uh, SU-70 uh, T-34 doesn't really have a chance. Stug goes down, though, to the other SU-85. Definitely a big loss for Mamil. He really need that unit. Uh, on the south here, Pianidi Assault, though. Wiping out the Sepersi, as predicted. Pianidi Kaladi really has no chance against these things. Roshiori PM's completely useless in this situation. Up north here, SU-76 causing issues. For some reason, Mamil keeps moving infantry right up to the line here and letting them just get creamed by this armor. Not really sure why he's doing that. SU-76 moving forward. I mean, uh, Stug-3 moving forward. Not a great fight with two of these. The SU-76s can definitely win that when it's two-on-one. Uh, Rashitsa, out of ammo. H-E ammo, at least. Kaladashi still doing what it does. BF-109 trying to take out that Zis-3 coming up just short. As his leader and Roshi run away. But light grenadiers, though, these guys very strong in the light cover. This is where you want these guys, especially two star. If he can keep this leader alive, it should really chunk these guys quite well. MP44 is showing what they're made of in these situations. This is where this is how you use these right here. Edge of green, wipe out some stuff in the yellow. Oh no no! Oh, that's a big loss. You don't get a lot of those, and they're like your main CQC unit. Oh, and now the IAR is going to come in too. Oh, oh, oh! What a bombing run! That was devastating, devastating. Here comes another one. Oh my God, these things are so good. I love this division. I heart fifth cav. Y'all know it. It's not changing. 
I am so excited for the new DLC. Yes! Rochiori double can easily overwhelm this Saperzi in the woods here. Just gotta finish that off to recapture this. Things not looking great for Homeyun. Uh, I don't think he has whittled down. I really don't feel like he's whittled down Mamil enough. Stug 3 going on SU-57. This thing can definitely kill it. Uh, it looks like it might. Oh, and there it is. Ooh, big kill there for that. I mean, my goodness. A 45-point recon killing your 80-point tank is a bummer. A lot of Stug losses, that's for sure, and you don't get many. Uh, that's the one thing with 5th Cav. You don't get much armor at all other than light recon armored cars. You get two cards of Stugs, and one of them is a leader card. So you don't get much to work with, and he's definitely burning through it in a hurry. Another Stug 3 coming through. He definitely needs to try to kill these this armor off first. The Glight Grenadier can definitely hold the line here pretty well. The Sheets are, though, going to take out one of these T-34s, and that's fabulous. The fire rate on these things is just disgusting. And he takes out another machine gun. So much value already out of this. Just gotta love it. Otsio Kani. Well, and these are very weak, and I was going to say really doesn't stand a chance against Oro Shuyori in the in the woods, but with that level of strength, they do. Coming up finally to the end of B phase, this is where Emil needs to pull back that uh, cluster, well, either the Stug or the cluster, it looks like the cluster. Cluster takes out one of those T-34s, SU-85 falling back, giving the Stug a chance to get into position, that's big. Pini Assault versus... Sapirzi rocks. The problem is there's a there's a veterancy gap as well though, so gonna be a problem there. The Pioneer Assault also a little bit weakened already down on health. This is gonna be rough. The Double Flame though, doing what Double Flame does, a lot of damage, and they win out. Yeah, these are just great infantry. They're absolutely fantastic. IL-2 coming in. 25 mils. Will they stop it? Oh, they do. They're very nice with that. The I just I wish Axis. AA was all 25 mil, like the uh, Soviet AA. It's just, it's actually useful. Like, it actually does something. Might even shoot this down. And it does. Wow, great kill by those 25 mil Hotchkisses. Really can't ask for any more. Uh, this is not the range you want your Stug fighting T-34s. Uh, this, the T-34, definitely has an opportunity to win. Shigam pinning down the Roshiori. Kararashi reveals itself. Oh, no, we have a little Miss Micro here. Lieutenant Pioneeri in the front. Taking it. Uh, ooh, not good. That Beretta, though, still doing the damage. Gotta love it. Uh, this is going to be a very disappointing loss, especially with the Pioneeri Assault standing a mere, like, 20 meters away. Ooh. That was rough. That was rough. Now, Homeyun did achieve the 15-9 here. We're in Phase C, though. His income does drop at this point, and this is barely a 15-9. This is holding this flag here, which can be very much taken and is going to right here. And we have 15 minutes for Emil to bring it back to at least a 12-12 to start the gradual pullback. T-34. Moving forward to stop this wave of infantry. Uh, we'll give the Stug... A opportunity to fire first most likely no it does not but the Stug is two stars so it should fire first it doesn't matter Roshi are gonna take that out big kill there su-85 though eyeballs on this oh nope eyeballs on the horse and that goes down he kind of needed that to help control this area Sapezi rocks gonna push down and try to capture this more peonity assault coming in almost out of those for sure we have our first artillery of the game 122 I'm not counting the mortars really uh, the 82 memorial, I mean, like, actual artillery. IAR easily forced off. Once the once AA covers comes up, these are no longer useful. Uh, they, they cannot break through anything. They're very still very deadly if you get them through, but it's very challenging to get them through any sort of AA. 45 mil, taking on probably that T-3476, I would think. It's not taking on anything at the moment. Just sitting here. I'd be raging right now. There we go, we got our first shot. Oh, it ends up it's shooting the Otsio Kani, though? Apparently, it does not have a line of sight on that. Okay, sure. Thank you, line of sight tool, for your lies. Uh, Homian's trying to push into this central town here. Otsio Kani, though, getting held off by the 25 mils, which can put down a lot of suppression, especially on disheartened troops. Another transport going down there. Uh, APCR, unnecessary to kill these SU-76s, but, I mean, there's only so much you can do sometimes. Does go down. Big kill by the 45 mil for sure. Let's see if we can take out that T-70 as well. APCR, again, not necessary. Uh, really should... He really wants that to run out of ammo, so he'll, it'll shoot normal AP. 
and it finally does taking out that t7 these are two big kills he needs that armor out of the way definitely need some more troops up north we have another stug a horse and a big light grand coming in i are easily forced off another flag grab down here for free at the moment uh, can easily be fixed. He just has to fix it. 37 mil here now covering this SU-85 off. The Blagites are not super effective in the woods. It's not where you want them. Run away. Two star. Now, with the support of the Peony Assault, they're definitely useful. Like, two on one for sure. Yep, with the Flamer. Gotta take... No, take... Make one of them stop shooting first. Okay, we took one out. Double Flamer. Doing its thing. Oh, but the double T-34 over there suddenly appearing and supplying some help. Stug 3, not a good fight here. SU-85 easily takes that out. This is what SU-85s are for, taking out medium tanks. They actually don't take out heavy tanks super duper well, even though that's what it feels like the whole point of them is. They are quite effective against medium armor, though. This Sapozi Rocks doing what it finally was meant to do, wipe out infantry. With the loss of that peony assault, these... Units, while strong, are not dedicated CQC like this Sapezi Rox is. That guy is rocking out. You do not want your Lieutenant Kiladi doing this sort of fighting. Oh, overwhelmed though. Three units do finally overwhelm that. Uh, Roshiori getting in here, hopefully to recapture this flag and stop the 15-9. Um, Emil really needs to prevent that from happening. But Homeon keeping on the pressure. And these last few minutes have definitely made some good progress. IL-2 coming in. Uh, basically anywhere he bombs back here is going to do a lot of damage. Can the 25 mil stop it in time? No, it fails. Oh, two big kills. Another transport going down there. T-34 is pushing forward now to kill these 25 mils, which is really bad. He needs those. BF-109 coming in to try to kill that. Not going to make it with this 37 mil here. Immediately calls that off. It does recapture this flag, thankfully for him. Uh, 122 going for the 37 mil, I would assume. Up north, not making a ton of progress. 45 mil, still picking off things here and there. Very effective. Stug 3 finishes that off. Okay, this I don't understand. Mm, that's unfortunate for the Stug 3 to be sure. Oh, it was already damaged. Woo, that was lucky. Unnecessary penetration, but came out ahead. So now the income should be about even. In terms of how many points both players have gotten, we have finally evened up. But that does not mean that Homeyun still doesn't have way more stuff on the board at the very moment. But Glites luckily unload in time. This is not their ideal range, though. Their singular MG42 not going to put out that much damage, especially against triple uh, DPs. Uh, Mimil definitely needs to watch the pathing of his troops here. He's driving troops through a lot of dangerous areas. Needs to recapture this little forest. There is not that much there. Now, obviously, he doesn't know that, but there really isn't a ton there. And even here is, is held very tenuously. JU-87 going in to try to take out some of these T-34s. Does get the clusters off. That went down first, though. I'm not sure what killed it. Maybe one of the 25 mils? Who knows? IAR getting forced off quite easily. Panzer Shrek. Yeah, I mean, nothing, wanting nothing to do with this town. Rashitsa, though, gets eyeballs on this. Should be able to finish that off quite easily. Yeah, it should be as long as uh, Homian doesn't move it ASAP. Which he does. Gets out of ice. Oh, no. Something uh, fire started in the forest, forcing the Rashitsa to move. Ooh, what a bad stroke of luck there. Back to the 15-9, although he is making some progress up north with the horse support. Uh, Beglite's pushing in. They can definitely beat the, like, mop up the remainder of these infantry, and all of a sudden this flag will fall in, and he'll pick up a little bit more time. Studebaker goes down to this Rashitsa. Definitely needs some of those transport kills to kind of even out. He has lost a lot of troops and transports. Another one goes down. Yeah, this is, this is crippling. Oh my goodness. Meal needs to start unloading a little bit further back. He's losing so many troops and transports. He's about to do it again if he's not careful. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Luckily, this time they didn't die in the transport, at least. Back to the 1410. Six minutes left for Meal. He needs to now bring this to a 12-12 ASAP. Spinia de Kaladi can definitely take out this T-34 if it stopped moving. Oh, no. Shoot. Shoot. Oh, he has it on a move order, not a shoot order. It's got that Panzer Shrek. Oh. Oh. Oh no, he's going to lose more dudes in the transport. Oh god.
At least gets it out of there. Oh, he finally moves it forward far enough to take that shot. Take out that T-34. Big kill there. Back to a 13-11. Artillery. It uh, looks like he's trying to kill the SU-85s with the artillery. I mean, they'll take damage. And I think they're already damaged. So there's definitely a chance it could do something. SU-76 going for some infantry over here. Not its best roll. Finally recaptures this. That's why we're back to the 13 level. So Mamil now finally breaking through here. That juggernaut income really coming full swing now. He's now got... About probably about 200 points more than Homeun on at least has gotten 200 points more in the game. Needs to capture one more flag, this one most likely, to bring it back to parity. Stug3 gets the first pen, is backing up though. I guess he just doesn't want to fight the two on one, but that's giving this one plenty of time to take shots. He gets so lucky, another miss. It doesn't look like he has line of sight. There you go, he doesn't anymore. Rashid's in a slightly better position, could help solve this problem for him. But, of course, it's in a great position covering all this off. Could use some uh, ammo and start doing its HE roll again. IAR flying deep over the lines here. 45 mil getting taken out. And all of a sudden, Emil has swung the north quite definitively. Only a couple units holding off all over the place. Four and a half minutes left. The homeown just needs to hold the flag advantage for a little bit longer. He's certainly not out of this yet. Rashitsa, though, coming in, takes out one of the SU-85s. The JU-87 is kind of redundant at this point, and the Rashitsa easily takes both those out. This is now armor-free down here, which is huge. He can now use his, his infantry to mop this up and easily regrab this flag, which should bring it back to a 12-12. BF-109 is in the air for this IL-2. Definitely unfortunate timing for Homeun here. He didn't shoot it down, but the damage is done. These This 25 mil can possibly take it out here with all the damage already applied yeah, is it gonna make it i don't think it's going to oh it's one of those moments you just sweat infantry now pushing in hard on these old Kani. should be able to win three on one pretty easily and they do once again, Emil being really aggressive with his transports. It seems a little unnecessary to be this aggressive. He's finally brought it back to a 12-12, capturing this flag up here as well. Uh, now overwhelming these infantry. And you can see Homeun has very little left on the board. This 37 being the last piece of AA. And Mamil still has all those IARs and stuff he can call in to kind of wipe out infantry whenever he's done taking out the rest of this last piece. And if this Rashitsa can get into HE range without running out of ammo, it can easily finish this thing off, and that'd be a big kill. Then the sky is completely open. And we're already at a 12-12. Like, Homeyun's already losing grip completely on this game. IR coming in to try to take out some transports. I don't know if that was an attack round, or he just missed, or... Yeah, I'm not sure. Can't say for sure what just happened there. But... Otsio Kani being pushed out of this town now, too, and it looks like Mamil will take advantage of this game for the first time since Phase A. We're 31 minutes in by now. Well into this juggernaut income. Very impressive that Mamil has held on. Uh, again, I don't. I feel like the effect is the same with Balanced. It's just easier. IR, here comes the Air Force. Now that... Uh, oh, yeah. Now that uh, Mamil has recognized... So this is, yeah, HE Cluster. Now that Mamil has recognized that there's not much AA other than this right here, he's kind of free to do whatever he wants with his Air Force, up north especially. IR is taking out so much, just a massive cluster of infantry. SU-85 trying to stem the tide, but it's a bit embarrassing. And Homeyun throws in the towel then. Uh, yeah, it wasn't going to get any better from there, and his lines were broken. Fantastic game there from Mamil. And Homeum played quite well. It just I don't I don't think you should play Maverick on Tally and Huntala. I just don't think that's the winning the winning choice here. It's a big deficit on kills and, and deaths here. 2350 for Home and 3710 for Mamil. Bigger than I thought. Uh, it definitely felt like Homeum was getting some really key kills, a lot of transports and things, but I guess the efficiency of the fifth cav just was too overwhelming um, for the first Polish. If we look here. Couple Otsio Kani doing some work. SU-76 doing some nice damage as well. SU-85 getting a couple kills, paying itself off. Uh, no, nothing else really doing a ton of work. This T-34E, probably that was probably a transport kill, I would guess. Um, on the other hand, though, BF-109, entire game was out. Killed some ground units, obviously shot down a bunch of planes. A lot of value out of that. Stug-3, 
did kill a couple things. I don't even think it paid itself off. Those are pretty cheap. It eh, probably barely did. Uh, Puska Antikar. I mean, 10 points. Whew. 70 points killed. IAR, this was the off map he called in at the beginning. So much value. So much value out of that. Rashitsa, that was the one in the middle here. Tons. Tons of kills. So good. In every way. Stug 3. Did some good work. Stug 3 again. PND Assault. These are definitely very dangerous. 45 mil. This is what I love about 5th Cav. Just everything's so efficient. You can trade so well with all your troops. And none of them are very expensive. You're just working on such efficiency. And Mamil really took advantage of that. Excellent game to both players. Game one goes to Mamil. If you guys enjoyed this content, please make that little like button, shoot fireworks, hit that subscribe button, and consider supporting on Patreon. It really helps out a lot. And you can get better at Steel Division 2 through Discord access, replay review, and coaching. Thanks a bunch, guys. Have a fantastic day.